On August 29, 2005, Hurricane Katrina slammed into the Gulf Coast to inflict the worst natural disaster in U.S. history. Vast sections of New Orleans and neighboring communities were turned into flooded boneyards. The storm's human toll included more than 1,500 dead and a million homeless. But it also destroyed and shut down the machines that drive a city, machines that provide its essential services, as well as the structures built to protect it from the ravages of nature. More than 200,000 homes would have to be demolished or completely gutted and the waste removed before the city could even begin to rebuild. To manage the overwhelming mountains of debris, contractors brought in the largest number of shredders, grinders, and balers ever assembled in one place. Their crucial role in the recovery demanded the city's boneyards be among the first to get up and running again. One of those was a New Orleans landmark called Southern Scrap, the largest metal recycler in the Southern Gulf Coast area. We were considered critical because there was gonna be a lot of metallic debris in the city and the surrounding areas, and we're the largest shredder in the Gulf South, and the best way to handle it is to get it through a shredder and get it recycled. Abandoned automobiles, over 350,000, constituted an overwhelming volume of metal debris that kept Southern Scrap's crews and shredders working overtime. Equally important were the recovery companies contracted to clear and haul away the debris from hundreds of thousands of wrecked homes and businesses. Before the contractors could begin, they had to clear paths through the maze of devastation just to bring in their equipment. As bulldozers and track hose began to clear and demolish the wreckage, the machines they relied on most were the shredders and grinders reducing the volume of debris to a more manageable size. The shredder in our industry is used for construction and demolition waste. A grinder, on the other hand, grinds the material at a much higher speed, is usually uh, used for wood waste, and hammers the material into tiny little pieces. But for construction and demolition materials, C and D, shredders are the machine of choice. And one machine in particular, a 105,000-pound device called the Annihilator quickly became the James Brown of the Katrina cleanup, the hardest working shredder around. What we end up getting is material that could be anywhere from 10 to 12 feet long. It's wood, it's metal, it's metal studs, sinks, tubs. This machine can take anything that comes out of a home, car parts, manhole covers, big chunks of steel. The Annihilator, built by Continental Biomass Industries, was inspired by European shredders that derived their destructive power from a combination of slow speed and high torque. The material used inside the box where the shredding actually occurs is something called Pardox. It's made in Sweden, and it's the same material used on our tanks for the military. Everything about the Annihilator is bigger and heavier than other mobile shredders. The hopper is over 10 feet long and 8 feet wide. An excavator operator would be sitting next to a pile and pouring it into this. The teeth pass through these opposing teeth, and the shredding action occurs between the two. The rotor is a 6-inch thick forging machined with these grooves in it. Each groove is fitted with a hammer, which has teeth bolted to it. Powered by a 730-horsepower diesel engine, the machine's twin motors develop 150,000 foot-pounds of torque to drive the massive rotor, teeth, and hammers. We put boats through it, small cars through it, pretty much anything that they want to put in it, it will eat up and spit out the other end. 